In this series of movies, I'm going to show a load of tips for working with Sampler, Ableton Live's fully featured sampler from the Live Suite Instruments range. There's a lot more to it than Simpler, the standard Live Sampler, so I'm going to go through some of the main differences and advantages to using Sampler. With Sampler you get a much larger control set to work with, featuring tabs for specific areas, including pitch and oscillator manipulation, an extensive modulation section, additional MIDI mapping, and then zones control for multi-sampling. So we're going to look at all of these tabs throughout these tutorials, but we'll start off with the Sample and Filter Global tabs, as these are essentially the sections you have on Simpler, with one or two extensions. So we'll look at the extra bits you get in there. I've just done a search for vocal one-shots in Loop Cloud now, so I'll drag out this Kate Wilde sample into Sampler. And then hitting a note of C3, we get the sample playing back. All I want is your love. All, all, all I... The area we'll focus on today is looping, as this is much more comprehensive with Sampler, and it's initially set up with these arrow switches here. Right now, looping is off, as the sustain mode arrow is just a single one, playing to the end. But if I set it to the next switch along, then I can use the loop bracket to choose which part I want to loop. So maybe the I sound at the start. And I'll add some crossfade to make it a bit smoother. And I could also try the next switch along, which is forwards backwards looping. So even smoother as it goes continuously in one direction than the other. As well as multi-directional looping though, you also get a second loop option, which is during the release phase of the sample. So at the moment, there's no amplitude release. So we need to go to the Filter Global tab to sort that out. Again, this is similar to on Simpler, only we have dedicated sections for both the filter and its envelope, and can also do things like loop the envelopes. What we want right now though, is the amplitude envelope on the right here, and it's the release phase we're interested in so how the level behaves when I stop playing or release a note. So if I turn that up a fair bit, you'll hear we get the level fading away now, and continuing to loop as it goes. What we might want though is to have the sample continue to play after the loop, so only loop whilst I hold down a note, but then carry on when I let go. And this is done with the first release mode switch. And if I adjust the curve using the blue handle there, so it doesn't fade out as quickly, then we'll hear the release section nice and loudly. Next though, what we could do is set up a different loop on the release phase, so have a different word in the phrase looping. To do this, we just select whether we want the loop to be single or bi-directional. I'm going to have it just going forwards, and then I can drag the lower loop bracket that's now appeared over the word I want looping, which is going to be the want after the I here. And I can add some crossfade to that too, so there's no clicking. And if you want to synchronise this to your track, then that's even possible, as you're able to type in exact sample values for all of the different loop positions here and that's something I show on my complete guide to sampler course. However, a quick workaround that's a bit less flexible but almost as good is to simply bounce down the audio. So I've got a two bar long MIDI clip here with a single note of C3, so I can have the eye looping at the start here and then the want for the rest of the clip. And I've tweaked the brackets so the timing's basically there. But what I can do now is freeze the track and then flatten it so it's converted to audio. And you might want to duplicate the track first, or save it to your library before doing this, as now it's permanently converted to audio. But now what I can do is just set it to complex warping, so the quality is the highest, and then place a couple of warp markers on the audio, and drag the looping section as required to get the timing right. So it's a pretty easy fix without having to get too technical. I hope you've enjoyed this movie, tune in to the next one to learn about how to apply FM to your samples. 
See you then.